Hello everyone, my name is Pixorifs, and welcome back to the Minecraft Survival Guide. I hope you guys are having a good day. Even though the Nether update seems to be the focus of all of these videos lately, we always seem to start in front of my storage room here. This is just something traditional about it. Anyway, welcome back to the Minecraft Survival Guide. Today, I want to show you some stuff that I've been getting off camera because I've done a little bit more Bastion raiding on live streams here and there, and I got myself some goodies. For a start, I got some netherite scraps from a Bastion. I think we maybe we did that on camera, but what we didn't do on camera is get the Pigstep music disc. Oh, I'm so excited about this. Pigstep is a brand new music disc composed by Lena Rain, who also composed several other pieces of music that happen incidentally in the nether if you have the music turned on as you are walking around. And this is one heck of a jam, y'all. Let's put it on and... Yeah! <laughs> it is a really, really cool tune. I would encourage you guys to raid your nearest bastion if you want to have a listen to that track. But for now, we're going to turn that off because we can't have it uh, play through the entire video. I would if I could, believe me, but <laughs> we got stuff to do. We got things to discuss today, and I'm probably, actually, I'm probably just going to keep that in my jukebox box for now, because it occupies that last little corner. Now I've showed you guys that, I will put that away and return to the rest of the loot I've been getting from Bastions, because there is one other very important block, and it's in this chest here. We have a lodestone at long last, and lodestones are something I plan to dedicate an entire episode of the Minecraft Survival Guide 2, along with Soul Speed, because there are some very cool brand new ways to navigate in the nether. And today, I want to talk not so much about navigation, but about spawn setting, because at long last, it is possible to set your spawn in the nether in Minecraft. And we're not going to be using these, oh no, because these are a death trap in the nether. But setting your spawn point using a bed has been a long established mechanic in Minecraft, and only recently the functionality was added where you can right click on a bed to set your spawn regardless of what time of day it was. Previously, the only way you could set your spawn was by sleeping in a bed when it was nighttime or, as the message says, during a thunderstorm. But now it is possible to go from bed to bed setting your spawn point anywhere you care to in the overworld. And personally, probably because I start all of my videos here, I like to have it set up over here at my storage room so I can quickly come back here and get supplies if I've been to the end and that kind of thing. Or if I die, which is rare, but does occasionally happen. However, beds have historically exploded in the nether and there are some very good reasons for that from a game mechanics perspective. First of all, the nether has no day night cycle and sleeping has basically always been a way of resetting the day-night cycle in Minecraft. Therefore, it seems a little bit strange that you would sleep to reset the night to day when you're not really in a dimension where any of that day and night stuff really applies. Second, the nether is a pretty dangerous place. There is lava abounding everywhere. There is fire. There are nasty mobs that will try and blow you up from a distance in the case of ghasts and up close in the case of everything else. And it doesn't necessarily seem like the most hospitable environment to get your head down and sleep for the night. Mobs spawn constantly at any time of day and even the otherwise neutral zombie pigmen will prevent you from sleeping in a bed because technically they are monsters. Setting your spawn in a place that's basically designed to kill you always seems like a bit of a bad idea because then you could get stuck in one of those death spawn respawn and death cycles that just gets incredibly frustrating to you as a player and with no real hope of resetting that except for the bed being destroyed it doesn't really seem like such a great prospect. And finally because we said so <laughs> beds exploding in the nether is kind of fun and to be honest it's been a really interesting way of seeing if you can mine out some areas to find ancient debris because there's another form of explosive here that is relatively cheap although personally i'm still sticking to digging i'm finding a lot more ancient debris if i just dig tunnels but i'm working on my collection let me tell you and so it has remained for a long time but then along comes the nether update with an emphasis on trying to make the nether a bit more of a fun survival experience there are now blocks and items and things that you can do in the nether that allow you to basically have a full tool progression and a really interesting prospect to create a base in the nether, survive and thrive in the nether, and to be honest, it seems like about time that we got a way to set our spawn in the nether. So with the right materials, the right approach and a little bit of luck, we are actually now able to set our spawn in the nether, and today we're going to go into exactly how. 
The first thing you'll need is a resource that's been in the nether for a good long while. This glowy stuff here, glowstone, and you're probably familiar with this. At this point, it is all over the place here in the nether, but it is also accessible a couple of other ways. As we learned from the other episode I did this week about piglin bartering, these guys will actually give you glowstone dust as one of their trades, and that can be crafted into glowstone blocks. Unfortunately, I have already crafted all of that into glowstone blocks, but there it is. There is one glowstone dust in there, and I think I took the rest of it back to the overworld. Oops, I guess we'll be needing some of that a little bit later. But the other thing we need to set our spawn in the nether is right underneath their snouts this entire time, crying obsidian, a brand new block, which when this guy stops interrupting me, I'll be able to tell you about. Yes, crying obsidian can be found as another bartering trade from piglins, and they only give you one block of it at a time, but as you can see here, with enough bartering, it's possible to amass quite a decent amount of it. We've got close to a stack there, and that's just from a couple of chests worth of resources. They do seem to have it going spare. And even if you aren't keen on bartering with piglins for it, there is another place you can find it, which is perhaps even a little more rare, but if you're lucky, you might come across it as you explore. And that is in one of these, a ruined nether portal. Although count yourself lucky if you find one of these on land like I just did. I personally have been finding most of them hanging around in the lava lakes themselves, so they can be a little bit tricky to find. But here and there occasionally in these, this one is actually surprisingly intact in terms of the amount of obsidian that is used here, you will find blocks of crying obsidian as part of the landscape here. You'll find them actually generated as part of the world. And they take about as long as regular obsidian does to break with the usual tools. You'll need a diamond or a netherite pickaxe for that. Occasionally you will get them in the chest here as well, but I have a Fortune 3 gold shovel now, apparently. Well, I'm not going to be taking that with me, no sir. <laughs> Worth digging around these occasionally because some of the ruined blocks end up as part of the landscape below it, but looks like we just got one block of crying obsidian from that. Not to worry though, we have plenty of it to hand, so we can head back to our central nether hub and work on constructing a respawn anchor. While we are flying past though, I thought I would briefly show you guys this. This is probably the best example of an exposed piglin bastion I have seen, and that is really the effect they wanted from these bastions. That ghostly, broken pig face, that kind of horrible mouth and the snout on the front there, that is such a striking design and actually quite a clever representation of a piglin with the blocks that they've got. They're kind of sculpting with the blackstone and the basalt there. It really does look quite special. Unfortunate that we don't get to see them like this more often, but this really is quite a sight to behold when it suddenly looms out at you through the nether fog. Absolutely tremendous. And probably here and there you'll find some crying obsidian in these loot chests as well. For now though, I'm going to steal that lodestone and make my escape. I've also taken the coordinates of this bastion because this one right here has this giant cubic section on this side which is something very very special. I believe that contains a treasure room which might actually have a brand new mob spawner in the game. There are magma cube spawners in Minecraft now and right at the bottom of there underneath those bridges is where we will find it but that deserves once again an entire episode by itself so we're going to cover that in future but I've been taking the coordinates of these as I find them and hopefully we'll be able to find one that is close enough to our center of the world that we can make good use of it. So here we are back at the nether hub and I've actually started to clear out more of the netherrack above here so that I can show you guys the compass from above and so that we can finally put some of the finishing touches on the nether hub dioramas. After all this time, when I heard that they were announcing a nether update, I was fairly certain I wanted to preserve some of the spaces in here. So this nether hub has mostly been left untouched for the longest time. Now, I think is probably a time to start working on this. But for today's episode, at least, I promised you guys a bit of a look at how you could set your spawn in the nether. And now we're going to craft ourselves a respawn anchor. So this is a brand new block. The recipe for it is there in the recipe book, but we're going to do this one by hand. Three crying obsidian along the top and bottom, so six total, and then three glowstone in the center will get you one respawn anchor. Now, this thing is very, very special, and I think we should find a special place to put it down. I think we're going to put it down basically dead center of the nether hub, right in the middle here, so that I will respawn inside of these portals and be able to make my way back to the overworld if I want to. Even though we've got a crafting table in the center here, we have crafting tables everywhere, so let's put that down. And right now, we cannot right-click on this to set our spawn. The reason for that being, it needs to be charged up. And what we charge it with 
is glowstone. If I right click on that with some glowstone in my hand, you will notice this swirling portal texture and a kind of quarter moon appears on the front here. That appears on all four sides, showing that the block has one charge. And now if I right click on this, I have set my spawn point in the nether for the first time. Now that I have set my respawn point in there, we need to demonstrate the fact that this even works to begin with. But usually the way you end up respawning is if you end up dying. And I don't really want to die considering that I have 179 levels just from farming gold at my gold farm right now. I would rather not do it that way. So instead, we're going to take a quick trip to the end. Because the end is, of course, one of those places that if you hop through the end return portal, you have to respawn somewhere. And typically you will respawn in the overworld next to your bed. However, now we have set our respawn point in the nether, when I hop through here, we actually end up next to the respawn anchor here in the nether. And I believe that was supposed to consume a charge of the respawn anchor, but in this case, it has not. Our spawn is still set here, and we should be able to respawn there without it consuming another charge. The thing has not turned off. This quarter moon part of it on the front is still here, and we should be able to respawn here as frequently as we want to. However, if you die, you actually consume one charge of this and you would need to charge it again in order for that to work. Much the same as the first time we charged it, we need to charge it up with a couple more blocks of glowstone. And there we go, by charging it up completely, we get not quite nine lives, an advancement for charging a respawn anchor to the maximum. So now every time we respawn here, that should consume a charge of the respawn anchor until there are none left. Which means, of course, a total of four potential respawns. Now, of course, for those of us on Java Edition who like to head up to the nether roof, it is entirely possible to set your spawn up here on the nether roof as well. And that's where I'm going to stand for the moment, just because, to be honest, it's a little bit quieter up here than it was down in the middle of all of those nether portals. So I'm going to charge this thing up with a couple more charges of glowstone. Of course, as you respawn from this, you will probably end up consuming these charges and maybe you don't have an easy supply of glowstone nearby. Maybe you just forget to refill it and then sooner or later you find yourself spawning in the overworld. There is however, a really interesting way around this, and it involves a little bit of redstone. You'll notice that if you put a comparator next to these, they actually output a comparator signal, and we can measure this using some redstone dust here, as you can see. Right now, it is outputting a power of seven, meaning that this thing is halfway full, and if you charged it all the way up to the maximum, it would put out the maximum comparator output of 14, basically increasing by one quarter every time you add a glowstone charge to this. Not only that, but it is possible for respawn anchors to be refilled with glowstone from dispensers. If I just pop one of those in there, let's grab a button from over here from the uh, redstone box, pop that on there, and bam, there we go. It charges one more time. Now, another really clever aspect of this is that every time the respawn anchor gets charged, additionally, it changes block state because as you'll see over there on the right hand side, the charges amount goes up by one. And that means we can detect those block state changes using an observer. And anytime the charges go up or down, the observer will emit a redstone pulse, which can power a dispenser, adding more charges to the pot, basically guaranteeing that a respawn anchor will never drop below a full amount of charges. As soon as you respawn here and it consumes one charge, the glowstone from the dispenser will fill it back up again. And at that point, all you need is a full dispenser of nine stacks of 64 glowstone, or even a hopper on top of the dispenser on the side of the dispenser, putting more glowstone in, and you basically guarantee that you could respawn in the nether for as many times as you die. Provided, of course, that you never feel like going back to the overworld and setting your spawn there, or sleeping, because there is no way of skipping through the night in the overworld without sleeping in a bed and setting your spawn point there. And bear this in mind, it is not possible to have a respawn point in both the overworld and the nether. It has to be one or the other, because then otherwise, how would the game know which was which? So if you want to respawn in the nether, the respawn anchor is your deal. If you want to respawn in the overworld, sleep in a bed, and whichever one of those sets your spawn point is your spawn point until you set it again. So by now, I'm sure a few of you have the question, why would I even want to set my spawn in the nether? And the obvious answer, of course, 
is that in this 1.16 update, the nether is really meant to be a place where you're able to build bases. You can get wood, stone, all kinds of stuff from the nether. It's kind of got its own color scheme, its own build palettes, its own rules now. And I think it'd be really cool to see some nether bases later in this series where I could set my spawn point and basically live for a little while. In fact, later in July, I am actually planning on doing a full week of Minecraft Bedrock Edition videos in which I'm going to survive entirely in the nether, or try to at least. So a respawn anchor is kind of going to be the key to my entire strategy there. We're also potentially going to see a lot of uses of these things as life counters for mini games. Think about the comparator outputs that you can read from this thing and how that could be hooked up to a series of redstone lamps that would read how many lives you had left in a PvP mini game, or at least have a guaranteed number of respawns, maybe allow the mechanics of the game for people to recharge that, to buy themselves extra lives until they had the opportunity to take out their opponents. I like the ideas that this thing provides. It is game mechanics as well as just a fun way to respawn your character in the nether. And I think that's a really, really good thing. Now for the next question I'm sure everybody has been asking this entire time. If beds explode in the nether, then does a respawn anchor explode in the overworld? And the answer to that is... Yes. Of course it does. Uh, RIP all those levels and anything I was carrying that was not made of netherite. I think my gold helmet may have been blown up by that gag as well. <laughs> oh well, it was worth it for the demonstration and I have many pairs of elytra. At least my bow survived as well. Very happy about that. Might have to make another shield though. <laughs> Perhaps I should have stashed some of my stuff in a shulker box before I gave that a try. Anyway folks, that is respawn anchors in a nutshell. A little bit dangerous in the overworld and they do explode in the end as well. I'm not going to demonstrate it again but you guys get the idea. I do hope you enjoyed this episode of the Minecraft Survival Guide. My name has been Pixel Riffs. Don't forget to leave a like on this episode if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you want to see more, and I'll see you guys soon. Take care. Bye for now.